be unlikely. We actually had we actually had debates in I was going to say in Congress. Why would I say that? Maybe because we they call it the faculty senate. But we actually had debates whether a student that drops a class is entitled to continue to attend. It's like I don't care, you know. Probably shouldn't say that aloud, but you know they paid their money. Why not? All right. Our goal today is to look at is to get back and actually go from the wireframe to a completed website. So we're going to um, we're going to um, build sort of the template for a little site, and we're going to focus on two things. This is going to be like sort of a several class deal. We're going to focus first of all on the process of doing it. All right. Keep in mind that when you learn more in some different technologies, such as server-side scripting, some of the things that we talk about that are problems when we're doing plain old HTML pages will no longer be problems, because there'll, there'll be a better way to do it. But we have to play with the cards we've been dealt. And we're doing now plain old HTML sites, so we have to live with those restrictions. All right. What would, what would a good topic be? Cheese. Excellent choice. Cheese. What should our pages be? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I, I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. There are Yeah, the categories. Soft cheese, hard cheese. Goat. And resource. So we can link to other people's cheesy pages. That's, that's, good, enough, that's good enough for what we're doing. We'll have five pages. We'll have a home page. We'll have a... Hard cheese, a soft cheese, a, um, a goat cheese, and a resources page. All right. Five problems. Number one, we are going to create an HTML template. Because if you think about our page, our pages, there's going to be a good portion of the page, pages, that are going to be the same. The banner is going to be um, the same. The navigation is going to be the same. Probably have a footer on the bottom that will be the same. Maybe we have some other elements that are the same. So there's a good chance that a good portion of what we have is going to be the same. So we don't want to have to duplicate that, in our case, five times. So we want to get that down as as, as um, certainly as we possibly can. Now, I hesitate to say certain because, you know, nothing's 100% certain. Things will come up. You know, the, the, the sponsor of the Cheese Society of America may come up to us and say, you forgot such and such kind of cheese and we need to go and change it. Well, okay, you have to go and change it. But you want to be as certain as possible. So when we create a, what's it going to have? It's going to have the main structural elements. And it's going to have common content. And by common content, I mean the content that is shared on each page. Just like if you look at any site with a bunch of pages, there's a certain section of it that is in common. You look at Apple's site, the navigation on the top, the footer on the bottom is the same, the center is different. We're going to then HTML of CSS into there. And we're going CSS file or file. For 
first instance, we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to build a single CSS file. We're also going to only deal with one wireframe. All right? We'd sort of repeat this process if we were dealing with several wireframes. If we had a really complicated cheese for experts site and we got into, you know, the, the, the details of, of, you know, how you milk the goat or whatever. All right. <laughs> Uh, then we uh, then we would have um, um, we potentially could could repeat this process for like each wireframe that we had, all right. And it could be more involved because there might be some things that are shared style-wise between all pages, and then some things distinct to one block of pages, something distinct to another block. But we're going to keep it simple, and we're going to keep it simple by doing. A wireframe looking like this. Banner. Content area. I forgot nav. And footer. A reasonable choice for a, a simple straightforward site as our tribute to cheese. All right. Now, we're going to do this one time through. All right. After we are reasonably happy with these steps, then we are going to clone these pages and then finish each page off. We get our basic template of the common stuff and common structure that all these pages are going to have, basic HTML, basic CSS for the look. We then clone it and then fill in the details for the page. Now, your prototype would be kind of in this area here. Like for your project, uh, I said I want a prototype. What is a prototype? A prototype is a working model. Um, the interesting thing is, is all the documentation you pre prepare is necessary and is important. But the one thing that makes a lot of big impact on many people and is a good starting point for discussion is the actual prototype. The old idea of a picture being worth a thousand words. All right. Um, you can describe how the page is going to look and what's going to be on it and so on. Um, when people can actually pull it up on their computer, click around for a while. Uh, then they have a good idea. Now, you have to balance it when you make a prototype, right? You don't want your prototype to be too complete, neither do you want it to be too incomplete. A prototype that's too incomplete um, isn't going to tell the user what the final site's going to look like, all right? On the other hand, a, a prototype that's too complete, if the person despises the site that you're developing it for, then you've done a lot of work that you're going to have to go and redo. So it's kind of like a sketch, right? Um, you know, if you simply drew a stick figure, well, that's not detailed enough, right? It doesn't really show them anything. If you went and, and took the time to make a sketch that looks identical to a photograph and people say, no, I want the person facing the other direction, then you have to go and rework it. So y y your prototype, you want to invest enough time to give a good idea, but not so much time that if you have to redo it, it's a big deal. One thing I will say about developing prototypes is in a way, you have to develop a bit of a thick skin. All right? Because the whole idea of a prototype is you're putting it up in front of people for them to give feedback and to criticize it. So they're liable to criticize it, and they're liable to tell you what they like, and they're definitely going to tell you what they don't like about it. All right? Um, you have to remember, and, and again, this sounds funny, and this sounds like, like a Dr. Phil moment or something. That's his name, right? Dr. Phil? Yeah, the guy that looks like the one actor, yeah, the, that was in Arrested Development and, uh, yeah, and uh, Larry Sanders' show, Hank Kingsley. Uh, but you have, to, uh, you have to remember that when they're, when they're criticizing a prototype, they're not criticizing you, they're criticizing a web page. All right? Don't personalize it. Don't take it personal. It's the work that they're giving feedback to, not you. All right, and then your job is to take it, look at it this way. 
they've given you something. They've given you some information on, on how you can do your job better. And then it's, you can, you can take it, you can look at it with other feedback. Um, it is tricky when you get multiple feedback from different people and it conflicts. You know, one person is too bright, another person says it's too dark. Well, what do you do? Well, that's where you kind of look for consistent themes, you know. It might be that one person says one thing and five people say something else, in which case kind of look towards what the predominant number of people say. All right, so we're going to build our HTML template. Now, if we look at this, our HTML template almost suggests itself. This is a header tag. This is a nav tag. This is, could be any number of things, but could be a section tag. And this is a footer tag. So just the nature of, of drawing that out, you know, gives us a head start of what we want our template to be. So let's go and create this. Meta tags? Yeah. Well, what about them? You would put them in the HTML template if you wanted to use them because you're going to clone them then and, 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 and you'd want it to be copied. You wouldn't want to have to go back into all five pages and paste them. Yeah, I, yeah. Now, one thing that we want to do too I failed to mention is after we finished our template, before we, um, before things, is we'll do a little bit of cross browser testing and we want to do our validation of the markup in CSS through the validators, which we, which we talked about in a previous class. Again, the whole idea is, is catch the problems when there's only one copy of it that's bad. So you can change that as opposed to making five clones and then get the error there. Okay, I want to make sure I had the Firefox and the HTML5 shiv. Okay, I'm going to create a full this stuff. And I'm going to be classy, all right? And we're going to call it fromage. That is one thing that bothers me, by the way, now that, now that we're talking about our pet peeves and all that, which you didn't realize we were doing, but I was, <laughs> I was mentally in my head. Yeah, let's go ahead. Is, how come they say blue, B-L-E-U, cheese? That's like the first word is French, and then the second word is English. Should, but it doesn't matter. We're talking about the name for the cheese. All right, so if it's French, then it should be le fromage bleu, I would think or la fromage bleu, depending if the cheese is male or female. <laughs> All right? Uh, uh, it, it is. I mean, French is one of those languages. There's a lot of other languages like that, too, where the nouns are male and female, even if they're not really. OK. Realized at the moment I said it that I regretted it. Yeah.
All right, we'll go with this. We'll get rid of, we'll leave this in here just for laughs because this is a precursor to mobile development. This is something that we do to help mobile browsers display our page correctly. So here we go. I'm going to go and I'm going to save this in my fromage folder. Folder du fromage, right? And we're going to call it template. All right. Okay, as we had up there, we have a banner section. It's not a banner section. It's a heading, a heading, <laughs> header. I always call those banners, but that's right, the, the tag, yeah. I, I mean, I always think of them as banners, yeah. And then we had a footer section at the bottom. Now, notice where I have within the section. What's that called? Lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum? Yeah, what is that called? Yeah, it, that's the purpose that it solves is it's filler text or placeholder text. It's sometimes called Greek text even though it's not really Greek. It actually is Latin, I think, or, or fake Latin. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so the idea is, is keep in mind that we're developing a template here. And in our template, remember, this midsection of the page is going to get filled in with something different on each page. Well, that's fine. But I want to lay it out so I know how it's going to look. So I want something to be there, and I want something to take up the space. So I put the Greek text in. So, header. Now, we can get as extensive or as simple as we want to. We'll take it pretty simple. Oftentimes, our home page, we're going to call index.html. All right, and then the footer we could say copyright this thing we can once we get this up and running, we can like sell ads to Grandpa's cheese barn oh in God. in Ashland. <laughs> And, and, you know, this, this will be a source of revenue. <laughs> I saw a map of Ohio once, and it was like lake, corn, grandpa's cheese barn, <laughs> corn, Columbus, <laughs> and then that, that was it. All right, so we're going to look at this now. 
And again, nothing shatter, earth shattering. And I messed up and I saved it as a text document. So how do I fix that? I go here. And I do not hide extensions. And I go here and rename it. Now it's going to warn me because normally you don't change a file's extension once you've created it, but we know what we're doing. Ha uh -huh. So we can go in and do that. Turn, of course, we know what we're doing, but we don't know how to spell template. Termplate. All right. So there we go. And there is the basic HTML. What is this warning here? It is suspicious that we are running some JavaScript on this page. So we simply have to tell it that that's okay. We know what we're, again, we know what we're doing. All right. So there's our basic template. Now we want to go and now that we have this down, and let's assume this is our common content, all right? We'll do like one more check when we're done, all right? But after we clone this, remember that if we want to change any HTML, we have to do it in all five pages. Whereas any CSS that we want to change, we only have to change it in one place. So as far as like at what point do I start making the clones, I make those clones when I'm, when I'm confident that the HTML is, the common HTML is correct. Um, I, um, if, if I know I'm still fiddling with the CSS, that's okay, because I only have to do that in one place. All right, let's go and let's make our CSS file. Now, this is where a lot of our work is going to be over the next few weeks and in, in, in the uh, next few examples, will be doing different stuff with the CSS, all right, to achieve more flexible layouts and better layouts, because we're going to start with a pretty generic layout, and again, we're going to improve it. This example is going to be largely review, all right, but as we move forward, um, we will um, we'll, we'll do, try to do uh, more and more. So, one thing I can do is I can say header, I can say width of 600 pixels, um, let's do that, let's, let's do a width of 600 pixels for each of them, and let's say margin 0px auto. And that will have the effect of centering the content. So I want to do that for the header. I want to do that for the nav. I want to do that for the section. And I want to do that for the footer. I'm going to put my style sheet here. Why do you suppose I'm going to put my style sheet here? <laughs> well, yeah, because we want to use that style sheet. But why, why there? Why not up here? Pardon me? So its rules win. 
exactly. So in other words, my Firefox fix style sheet and my HTML ship, what if I wanted to do something goofy like make the nav a, um, uh, an inline tag instead of a block tag? I could put that in there and then that would guarantee that my style, I believe that would guarantee that my style code would win. All right, so let's go and view this. All right. Notice, by the way, we could sort of figure out what it was doing. Is notice it did not show it at the right width until we said it was okay to run the block content. So the block content, because this is IE, was the HTML5 shiv, and um, that's why it went like that. Now again, this is 600 pixels, and it's centered. Now once it gets smaller than that, we cut it off and we have a scroll bar. So the one thing that we can do, in addition to doing a, or, or rather than doing a absolute width, is we can give a percentage. So I can say 60%. All these things have been important for a long time, but they now, with the advent of mobile, devices become even more important, right? Because back in the old days, 60%, yeah, there was some variance between what 60% was on a big monitor or a laptop or whatever. But now when you're comparing viewing it on some giant monitor versus a tiny phone, there's a big difference in what 60% represents. So now we go and look. And notice as we make it smaller, it makes it smaller. That's pretty narrow, right? If we don't ever want it to get more narrow than this, we can do something like put in a minimum width. So it will make the size 400, I'm sorry, it will make the size 60% uh, of the available space, but it will never go below 400 pixels. Now I said 60% of the available space. That's an important thing to remember. When I assign percentages to things, the percentage is the percentage of the space within the container. So in other words, the header the header is directly underneath the body. All right? What does that mean? That means that when I say 60%, I mean 60% of the body. If I went and did a percentage on the um, H1 here, if I said 60%, that'd be 60% of what the header was taking up. All right. In fact, let's go and do that. If I can, if I say header H1. with 60% border. I'm going to put a border around it so we can see. Um, so we can see where it ends, because otherwise it will look like it goes all the way across anyhow. All 
All right. So the header takes up 60% of the page. The H1 takes up 60% of that 60%. So if I go put a border around this, you'll see that that 60% of the whole page, this is 60% of that space. And as I make it smaller, it goes, but it stops at 400 pixels. All right. I'm going to get rid of the borders now. Um, whenever I want to show something that won't immediately be apparent, I'm going to either put a border on it or change the color. And one thing that we should do is we should set some colors for this uh, and fonts and all that. But I'm more concerned today about the layout of this. So we'll get. Um, We'll get that going first before we concern ourselves with that. All right. So we probably want these to be oriented horizontally. So we can do that by, how do we do that? Repeat, please. Right, we make it an inline tag. So nav li. Actually, make nav ul. No, you're right, lab li. Um, and we say display inline. What that does, again, is that changes the nature of an LI tag, all right? An LI tag normally is a block tag, which means that they stack on top of each other as a block. We don't want our navigation to do that, though, so we want to have it go across. So we will say display inline, and that'll make them go across. Interesting, I got rid of the bullet point too. That's weird. Let's test it across other browsers and see if that's the case. Did there too. Fair enough. Now, if we notice as we make this smaller, notice that given a minimum width of 400 pixels for that, it never goes and breaks it. Let's get rid of the min width. Actually, let's change it to zero for everyone. All right. On that size, it looks the same. But as I go and scroll and get smaller, notice that the navigation links sort of line up that way. And I kind of don't like that when that happens. That's one reason for using a minimum width. You can pick a reasonable minimum width. And with mobile phones, yeah, there are mobile phones with a width of 400 pixels. But, you know, that, that's still a pretty small mobile phone. And they're probably used to doing a little bit of scrolling if they have that size of a phone. So that would be OK. 
there's any, yeah, there's, there's other things that we can do to accommodate that. Um, one thing that we want to do, and again, I don't want to steal my thunder from a, uh, an upcoming class, is we can take steps to make our browser, or I'm sorry, we can take steps to make our page look good across a variety of platforms with just one set of CSS. And we can just use what's called good responsive design techniques. But we can actually carry it further and actually do customizing for phones and things like that where we could, um, we could um, you know, really optimize it. So sometimes if you're doing a simple enough design, you may only need the one style sheet and it will look good across multiple platforms. In other cases, you have to do some work to get it. Now, let me see if we have the Opera mobile emulator here. I think we do because I think I've used it in another class. Yeah, okay. You're right. Shouldn't take long to download, though. We'll let that download while we continue our discussing. All right, now, one thing I'm going to put on this is I'm going to put sort of a title for the section. So like if I'm on the home page, it's going to say that I'm on the home page. If I'm on the hard cheese page, it's going to say hard cheese. And it's going to say soft cheese and it's going to say resources. So I'm going to go here and put, that's something I probably should have. So I'm going to put it here. And the template, I'm just going to put the words, name of page. And then on each individual page, I'll go and make that. All right. Name of page. Now. That looks a little too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. I'm also going to follow the practice of anything big I'm going to make in sans serif, anything, uh, I said that wrong, anything big I'm going to make in a serif font, anything small I'm going to make in a sans serif font. So, I can kind of do this a couple different ways. I can either assume everything is small and then change the cases where it's big or assume everything's big and then change the cases where it's going to be small. I'm going to assume everything is small. So I'm going to say body, font family equals, oh, equal, Helvetica, the movie star font, Ariel, and sans serif. We spoke in class why we use the three fonts, correct? All right. Yeah. Any, any given machine may or may not have any of these fonts. The last font is sort of a catch-all. Generic sans serif. So even if you're using some crazy browser that someone wrote on their own, by the specs of a browser, there, there is a default, there ought to be a default sans serif font. All right. So first it's going to try Helvetica. If the machine doesn't have Helvetica, it will use Arial. Otherwise, it will use the browser's generic sans serif font. So if we go and look at this.
All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to get rid of that bogus width that I put on here to demonstrate because that's just sort of getting in the way. Well, I'm going to go in here and put the font family, and I'm going to put a font family of serif fonts. All right. Common serif fonts. Let's do, huh. I just wanted to type in trebuchet, serif. In fact, I can do that for all H1s on my page, right? I on, don't only want them in the header. I want anywhere on the page that there's an H1. All right. So now we sort of have achieved our goal with that. All right. What about some space between the links? How can we achieve that? Padding. And we can put margins. Again, we had talked about this and we drew the box model. Um, there is a Oh, great. I, I, I was on the document cam for a while there. Yep. If we have a, an item here of text, the space from the border, this is the border, the space from the border to the text is the padding, the space from the border to the next element is a margin. Now, some of these only exist on block tags. All right. Let's see what we got here. If I say nav li display inline padding five pixels. And I spaced it out, and that's good. All right. Now, one thing that we can do, um, and we can have, um, we can do a lot to make these look more like buttons. All right. So I can do something like this. I could say nav A. background
right, there we go. And what if I, what if I, I probably want to give them a consistent width? So I'll say width, width, 80 pixels. Did absolutely nothing. Why not? Well, don't just randomly guess <laughs> something else to try. Well, we don't have a border. Why don't we? There is a specified nav A. That means na uh, any A's, any links within the nav section. The rest of the styling took. Just this one didn't. Oh, because the words are But we, met, we specified the width to be that wide, shouldn't it? We could put blank space after it. I mean, what would Taylor Swift do? Should, should have a blank space. Is this like two classes in a row I made a Taylor Swift yeah. joke? Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah, there's a door, right. Okay. All right, we already have padding. There's, there's a simple answer to this. You can't set the width on this because it's an uh, A's are inline elements. So I have to say display. I'm not going to say block. I'm going to say inline block. Inline block is like one of those like Tastes great, less filling, right? It makes this tag be treated both ways. Like you can look at it, it has some of the properties of an inline tag, but it has some of the properties of a block tag. So now when I make that change, boom, we got the width the way we want it to be. Now unfortunately, we went a little bit too big on that. So let's go and let's make, make the minimum width of this guy. 500 So I'm not completely happy with that answer, but it's almost the end of class. Now, what if we want to give a little mouse over effect to these? We can use a hover, right? And we can go and say a nav a colon hover. Hover is what's called a pseudo class. And we can change the background and the color. And let's make it black. And we'll keep the color as white. So I don't have to say white because We've already defined for that the color to be white. We only want to save what we are what we want to overrule when we hover this. All right. So we're going to continue doing this where we're going to. Our, our, over, our overarching goal is to be talking about layout, all right, and how to make our page look the way we want it to. As we do that, though, we're going to come back and revisit maybe some CSS that we talked about before, or maybe I talked about to individuals in lab, or whatever. To, so the next while is going to be, uh, a, 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 the class is going to be devoted towards sharpening the CSS skills. Um, both extending the stuff that we've learned before, maybe, go, maybe repeating and going into more detail of the stuff that we sort of casually mentioned, 
and then doing some new things to make the layout of the page the way we want it to be. All right, questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.